while almost every spaceflight related project is on standstill due to the crisis. China and SpaceX are the only ones going on as if nothing happened. And SpaceX of course tops everything by actually increasing their efforts and seeking to hire 60 new employees at Boca Chica for Starship production. By the way, Starship SN3 looks almost finished. So when finally fly tests? But unfortunately for the Dragon Demo 2 mission, two new developments could delay the crewed flight to the ISS, which was planned to launch in mid or end May. So will Boeing be able to gain the upper hand again? And guess what the crisis means for the James Webb Space Telescope? Yes, you guessed it, further delays. While at NASA of course we'll also want to talk about the Artemis program and there are some extremely unexpected developments involving SpaceX. And the Space Force now had its first mission, but what kind of mission is it? And unfortunately we see already the first company being struck brutally by the crisis, Bigelow Aerospace. As always a lot to talk about, so stay tuned. So basically every spaceflight related project on this planet is currently in sleep mode. Only SpaceX and China are continuing as if nothing happened. China is trying to maintain their rocket launch dates and mission timelines for this year, the most noteworthy one being certainly the Mars mission, which is still scheduled to launch in July 2020 and to arrive on Mars in April 2021 at Utopia Planitia, complete with a lander and a rover. And we shouldn't forget the Chang'e 5 lunar sample return mission planned to launch in December this year. Both missions, if successful, would be insane milestones for the Chinese space program and we hope both will succeed. The Chang'e 5 mission, by the way, would be the first mission to bring back lunar rock samples since Luna 24 in 1976. So yeah, China is trying to maintain their space flight schedules despite the crisis in 2020, but only one entity, yes, only one entity is even increasing their efforts despite the crisis. And you of course already guessed which one. Blue Origin of course. <laughs> Joking aside, it's Boeing of course. Okay, now, now seriously, of course SpaceX. So yes, it was super obvious for us that only SpaceX would actually hire new employees amidst this insane global crisis. So while the world is seeing some bad times, SpaceX are seeking to hire 60 new employees in order to ramp up Starship production at Boca Chica. Elon is serious about this and he won't let the crisis delay the biggest project of humanity. It seems that even Cameron County, which is the county in which the Boca Chica SpaceX facilities are located, is shutting down. However, it seems that, at least for the time being, SpaceX seems to be exempt from this. Now we hope that the people there stay safe and virus free. Regarding SN3, progress is really extremely fast. The tank section has already been transported to the launch mount, where of course, as always, it will first undergo pressurization tests at cryogenic temperatures with liquefied nitrogen. Should this test go well, then we will see a wet dress rehearsal where the tank sections will be loaded with liquefied oxygen and methane, the gases that will actually power the Raptor engines. Only after that static fire tests will commence. To that end, three Raptor engines will soon be installed or are already in the process of being installed. Static fire tests could happen as soon as April 1st, then followed by a short 1 meter hop. If both go well, we could really see already a 150 meter hopping test flight next week, maybe as early as the 6th of April, according to Cameron County road closure dates. It will be similar to the 150 meter test flight of Starhopper last year, only a lot more spectacular. But unfortunately for the Dragon Demo 2 mission, SpaceX encountered some problems which in the worst case could even delay the planned crewed flight to the ISS, which is currently planned for mid to end of May. We know that the last Starlink Falcon 9 launch didn't go perfectly. We talked about the failure of a Merlin engine during the latest Starlink Falcon 9 mission, resulting in the complete loss of a Falcon 9 rocket booster in this video here. While the deployment of the Starlink satellites was successful, the engine failure of course has to be investigated. 
and it appears that NASA and US military officials are involved in that review. Interestingly, SpaceX requested the participation of NASA not the other way around. Officials from the Space Force are also involved because there's an upcoming launch of a US military satellite on a Falcon 9 rocket scheduled for the 29th of April. And they probably want to make sure that their payload reach orbit as planned. So is this bad news? Actually not at all. This is completely standard procedure. However, the review should hopefully not take too long. Because if the review takes too long, this could delay the Dragon Demon 2 mission. NASA even stated that the launch of the Dragon Demon 2 won't take place until the investigation is finished. Plus, there are reports of another anomaly during the latest parachute test of the Crew Dragon capsule on the 24th of March. But we have to say that this one here doesn't sound like SpaceX's fault. We can read in the official press release from SpaceX for that incident during a planned parachute drop test on Tuesday. The test article suspended under the helicopter became unstable. Out of an abundance of caution and to keep the helicopter crew safe, the pilot put the emergency release. As the helicopter was not yet at target conditions, the test article was not armed, and as such, the parachute system did not initiate the parachute deployment sequence. While the test article was lost, this was not a failure of the parachute system, and most importantly, no one was injured. NASA and SpaceX are working together to determine the testing plan going forward in advance of Crew Dragon's second demonstration mission. So even though this incident of course gave rise to many clickbait headlines, portraying it as a really bad failure of SpaceX, in our opinion, this has nothing to do with the Crew Dragon capsule or the parachute system itself. The Crew Dragon capsule attached to the helicopter and intended for a parachute test was not a real capsule, but a mock-up. And as it reads, the mock-up became unstable. The reason being not specified further. It could have been badly attached. There could have been strong winds. We don't know. But it certainly doesn't read as if the Crew Dragon capsule or the parachute system itself would have encountered problems. So while we understand that the shutdown of one Merlin engine during the latest Starlink Falcon 9 launch has to be investigated, we certainly don't understand why this incident could have any impact on the Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission. So while it seems possible, though certainly not confirmed that Demo 2 might be delayed, Boeing suddenly sees its luck returning, hoping that Starliner might be the first to launch to the ISS after all. To that we have to say, highly unlikely. Sure, while SpaceX did have a problem with the Merlin engine, the underlying problems with Starliner went much deeper, as we detailed for example in this video here. Starliner will certainly remain grounded for a much longer time, and certainly now even more so because of the virus, forcing also Boeing to shut down their facilities. So no, we don't think that Boeing will be able to gain the upper hand in this. And now some really unexpected news from Artemis involving SpaceX. What? Artemis and SpaceX? That's too good to be true. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the first step to our dream team is becoming a reality. We were always hoping that NASA would turn to SpaceX for Artemis, and now it is happening, though in a different way than we would have imagined. NASA chose SpaceX for resupplying their Lunar Gateway and SpaceX will apparently use a new cargo spacecraft, the Dragon XL, which we can see in this render here. It can bring more than 5 metric tons of cargo to the Gateway and will be launched by Falcon Heavy. The Dragon XL will then stay docked at the Gateway for 6, even up to 12 months. It will basically contain all the equipment necessary for astronauts to stay aboard the Gateway for longer periods of time, but of course also to conduct lunar surface missions. Now while we find this development excellent because it involves SpaceX, and we also like to see the Falcon Heavy involved in Artemis, you know that we aren't exactly fans of the whole Lunar Gateway idea in itself. It is a cumbersome and complicated approach to land on the moon. 
even though Doug Lovero, chief of human spaceflight at NASA, recently said that the Lunar Gateway would not necessarily be used for the 2024 Artemis 3 crewed moon landing, NASA still wants to stick with the Gateway in the mid-2020s and conduct the lunar surface missions with an attached reusable moon lander that would dock to the Gateway. Now of course, should our theory materialize, namely that Starship will be ready to deliver astronauts to the surface of the Moon by 2024, it would make the Lunar Gateway obsolete. Which then of course would mean that SpaceX wouldn't get to use their Falcon Heavy and Dragon XL to resupply the Gateway. Maybe Starship will be used after 2024? Maybe they want a dual approach to use Gateway for collaborating with international partners who then could conduct surface missions from the Gateway with the reusable moon lander, while Starship will then be used simultaneously for phase 2, namely to build a moon base by the later 2020s. Who knows, it's pure speculation at this point, but we are certainly very happy to see SpaceX involved in Artemis. This is excellent news. But there are bad news from Bigelow Aerospace. Now we are absolute fans of Bigelow Aerospace's expandable habitats. Their BA330 and BA2100 expandable habitats are certainly excellent ideas. And we would absolutely prefer them to any other tin can space station design, such as currently seen with the ISS. Expandable habitats are lighter more resistant to space debris and micrometeorite impacts, and easier to transport into space. We already talked about the expandable Bigelow modules in this video here. These modules are really superior in every way. They could even be used as habitat modules on the Moon or on Mars. So Bigelow, even though having an absolutely advanced technology, is now facing severe trouble because of the crisis. The company just laid off its entire workforce last week on the 23rd of March. Every single one of its 68 employees. We are extremely saddened by this move. And while we like the products and the technology of Bigelow Aerospace, this is certainly not the way to treat employees. Not cool, Bigelow Upper Management. Not cool. As always in a crisis, the ones who have to face the most brutal consequences are the ones doing the actual work. The assholes doing the PowerPoints and flip charts will certainly not be the ones running into financial problems. We really hope that the laid off people will be reinstated as soon as possible and the company will survive because we really want to see the Bigelow modules in space. For example, for private space missions or even for giant rotating view space stations on the Moon and on Mars. We even want to see them attached to a rotating ring around Starship for a flight to Mars and back. So we sincerely hope that Bigelow Aerospace will survive this crisis. Now another one of our beloved space projects which will face delays due to this damned crisis is the James Webb Space Telescope. We already talked about why the James Webb Space Telescope is such an amazing instrument. For example, in this video here, it has a 6.5 meter diameter segmented mirror array compared to the 2.4 meter diameter mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope. So it therefore will have more than seven times the light collection capacity and almost three times the angular resolution of the Hubble. It will thus enable astronomers to see further and deeper into the universe than ever before and will certainly lead to many amazing discoveries. Now we are of course most fascinated by the idea to use the James Webb Space Telescope in order to detect biosignature gases in the atmosphere of exoplanets in order to finally discover exoplanets that can host biological life. Its instruments are so sensitive that many even hope to detect so-called technosignatures. These are gases that can only be produced artificially, thus by primitive alien civilizations about uh, on our level of primitiveness who are like us stupid enough to pollute their home planet. FCKW molecules, for example, would be such a technosignature, as they can only be created by technological processes and don't occur naturally. So yes, this instrument is truly remarkable and it should have normally launched in spring next year, 
But of course, who is building this telescope? No, not Boeing this time, but another old school contractor for NASA, Northrop Grumman. Yes, the guys who back in the day built the lunar excursion module for the Apollo missions. So being an old school contractor, of course, the costs for the James W. Space Telescope, originally intended to be $1.6 billion, have now increased to around $10 billion. Of course, now the crisis is a welcome excuse for them to delay the launch even more, possibly until 2022. A really wonderful project, which unfortunately again shows us the brutal inefficiency of the old school contractors such as Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin or Boeing. And now some cool developments from the Space Force. The Space Force actually did something for the first time. But please, don't make the mistake to think that this would be something that would justify the name Force. More like space militia, or actually that would even be exaggerated. Tiny military-related space presence would rather describe it. So yeah, no secret space plane, no troop transporter, no vessel of any kind even remotely able to transport space marines, just a boring communications satellite, the AEHF-6, which will provide jamming-proof communications including real-time video, was launched last week on the 26th of March on a ULA Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Well, better than nothing, we guess. Everyone must start with small baby steps, right? And the Space Force was only officially created last year in December, so this force will hopefully have enough time to deserve the name Force. And you, of course, know our theory. We have mentioned it plenty of times in our videos. Namely, that the Space Force will certainly buy starships from SpaceX in the future and use Starship as military troop transporter to transport space marines to anywhere on Earth within 30 minutes. But also other Space Force modified military starships seem possible. Maybe even one named Enterprise. Now attaching phaser banks and photon torpedoes is unfortunately not within our technological capabilities. But attaching powerful lasers to future armed starships certainly is. However, real space battles would look extremely boring as compared to what sci-fi movies show us. You would actually not be able to see the laser beam itself as there aren't enough gas atoms or molecules in the vacuum of space to diffract laser beams. And of course, one would also not be able to hear any sound. And until Starship will actually be employed by Space Force, we will probably have to get used to a few more not so spectacular Space Force missions. So what is your estimate? Do you think it's likely that the Demo 2 mission will indeed be delayed due to the Falcon 9 engine failure? And are you also as surprised as we are by NASA's choice of SpaceX as their future resupply contractor for the Lunar Gateway? So you just watched the JS Space Report on every Monday where we give you our honest opinions on the most recent developments in spaceflight and space exploration with a strong emphasis on space politics. So don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any future show. Thanks for watching and I would say on to the future!